Don't photograph or videotape any part of today and alert the photographer if you're in a picture that you realize was taken and you do not want it posted. You can learn more about the candidates. Vote champagne.org slash guide. Most of the candidate Q&As are now posted. Finally, let's all make a pledge to vote. Do you belong to a book club, a school club, a student club, or office of a larger organization? Ask them if they're willing to pledge to vote. When they pledge to vote, we will post it on social media so that everyone knows. To sign up your group, go to the Facebook page of any of our co-hosts and look for the candidate forum event posts. There's also a QR code at the back that you can go ahead and do the same with. Help yourself to snacks. Please stick around, of course, for the Unit 4 School Board, last but not least. Let's start right now with our two-minute introduction of each of our city council candidates. We are going to go in alphabetical order, and as, if, as you know, the rules are, you have two minutes at 90 seconds. Michelle here will hold up, hold up the yellow sheet, which tells you you have 30 seconds left, and when she holds up the red sign, it means stop. That's, please, please stop. <laughs> so thank you so much. Let's start, let's see if I can remember how to alphabetize things. Let's start, of course, with two minutes with Matthew Gladney. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you to the partners who've come together for this uh, forum, and thank you all for, for joining us here this afternoon. So um, I'm born and raised in Champaign. Um, I've been a university employee for the last 16 years. Uh, I served four years on the Champaign County Board and have been on the Champaign City Council uh, the last eight years, so I've had a lot of involvement with um, the inner workings of local government. Uh, I'm also involved in the community. I've been on uh, several boards and organizations. I'm currently on the McKinley Foundation Board of Directors. And to talk a little bit about what City Council has been up to, at least for the last term, um, we've worked with several community partners on various initiatives, including uh, the Gun Violence uh, Reduction Blueprint, which you've already heard a lot about today. Uh, one thing that I'm really hopeful for is the LIFT program that we're working on with Unit 4 uh, to help our K through 12 uh, sort of like at-risk uh, students and hopefully that will bear a lot of fruit down the road uh, in that regard. And then uh, we're working on bolstering our first responders, both fire and police. We have a, a very good incentive package uh, for our police officers. We've had uh, some success with that in hiring, including lateral hires. Um, We've made it through the, the, probably the thick of the pandemic, and that wasn't easy on anyone. It wasn't easy on us as just regular citizens or governing bodies or businesses. Um, and so we're looking ahead at recovering from that. We've got a lot of uh, infrastructure projects going on, including the Garden Hills uh, project, which we're using some ARPA funds for. Um, as a township, we've... Uh, worked with uh, our township supervisor in opening the Strides Low Barrier Homeless Shelter. We've opened the Department of Equity and Inclusion and the Human Rights Campaign, which is an LGBTQ uh, organization. Uh, we've gotten, the, for the first time, a 100% rating for the city of Champaign. Thank you. Thank you. William Kyles? Thank you. Thank you to the panel for your time and commitment in increasing voter awareness. As mentioned, my name is William Kyles, and as all I am uh, seeking for re-election as an at-large city council member. I've been blessed, privileged, and honored to serve the city for the past 14 years in various positions, and yet I don't believe that it's seat time alone that makes the official. It's the journey, the experiences that make them count. Through tragedies in our communities, losses, disappointments, sadness, and discontent, to joy, happiness, reprieve, and the thank you God moments that have passed, we've all shared them together. I've been blessed to see and work through them all. I've learned that we all have ideas when we come in, but we can't predict how and when those ideas come to fruition. What we can control is our willingness to listen, our commitment to work to preserve what is good, and work through our challenges with eight other council members, the public, and staff. This has been my faith journey over the past 14 years. If re-elected, I'm committed to working on balanced budgets, building positive police community relationships, economic and infrastructure projects, I'm committed to our inclusion initiatives, especially the economic ones. Reverend Dr. King didn't just want us to be able to go to the restaurant, but he wanted us to eat at the restaurants. And there are too many tables where African Americans have a seat at the table without a meal. This hurts our collective goals. And if there's one initiative that I would highlight to increase public safety, 
is seeing the Blueprint and Lift program through because these programs focus on building families and communities. Families build blocks, blocks build neighborhoods, neighbor builds, neighborhoods build cities, and so on. This has been my commitment to the city and will continue to be my commitment to the city should I be reelected. Thank you again. Thank you. Kathy Shannon. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors, the moderator, the timekeepers, the audience, and everyone who submitted questions through the portal. My name is Kathy Shannon. I've been on the Champaign Unit uh, for a School Board for eight years as board member, secretary, and vice president. My husband and I raised two daughters here, both Champaign Central High School graduates. One of them is in graduate school at the University of Wisconsin. The other plans to enroll at Parkland College in the fall. I'm originally from Madison, Wisconsin, and my husband and I lived in the Boston area for eight years before we moved here in 2002. I have an associate degree in accounting and another in computer programming. When we moved here, I went back to school, starting at Parkland and finishing at the U of I, and received a bachelor's degree in math and computer science in 2009. I worked as a computer programmer in Madison and Boston for 12 years. I spent 10 years working as a bookkeeper for several small businesses in town, and I'm currently the finance director at the Champaign-Urbana Schools Foundation. In 2021, I co-founded the group Curbanism Club to advocate for better urbanism in Champaign-Urbana, and I email a newsletter to that mailing list every week to inform members about urbanism issues in the community, including a summary of both Champaign and Urbana City Council agendas. I'm stepping away from the school board after eight years because my kids are out of the school system, but I care deeply about the city and many of the issues that city council uh, works on have a direct impact on the school district. I was appointed to the city plan commission last year and I've learned more about Champaign's land use policies and decision making. I've been deeply involved in Champaign over the 20 years that I've lived here and I'm excited for the chance to continue that involvement through a seat on the council. I want to help create an environmentally and fiscally sustainable future for our city, particularly through land use issues, um, including safe, accessible infrastructure and affordable housing. Thanks. Thank you. Greg Stock. Hi, everyone. I want to thank you all for coming out today. It's a beautiful day, so thank you for spending your Sunday afternoon here, and particularly to our organizers. I know. This does not just happen. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, I am, uh, my name is Greg Stock. I am a 29-year uh, teacher at Centennial High School. I teach American government, U.S. history, and African American history. I'm also the social studies department chair and part of the librarian there. Um, as I said, I've been there for 29 years. Uh, during that time, I have taught thousands of people, uh, thousands of kids in, in Champaign. I've taught a few people here. Uh, and. Um, and I also served on city council from 2016 to 2021. So, uh, so I am running again to come back to city council. I'm also on the Crime Stoppers board uh, currently. I'm on the Champaign County African American Heritage Trail board as well. In the past, I've served on the library board, the Historic Preservation Commission, Police and Fire Commission. So. A lot of commissions in my and boards in my life. Uh, I'm running uh, basically to. I'm also a realtor and small business owner. So uh, I am um, running basically. I think there's a lot of big issues in Champaign, obviously, as we all do, um, and I think there's a lot of big decisions that are going to have to be made in the next few years. You know, as federal money runs out, you know, we've created a lot of great programs, and we need to think about, you know, how are we going to continue to fund them? How are we going to uh, make our neighborhoods healthy? How are we going to continue to improve our older neighborhoods across town, Garden Hills, as well as other, as well as other neighborhoods as well? Um, also, I, I just think that it, right now we need experience in terms of some of the changes that are coming forward in Champaign and supporting our uh, police and fire, our public safety workers is certainly a big thing and I'm uh, with staffing issues and so on and so forth that I'm almost out of time, so I'll stop. <laughs> Thanks again for coming out today. Thank you all, and Mr. Stock, you get to kick us off with our first question, and we'll start with you. Assume you are talking to a group of college seniors who are considering a move to Champaign following graduation. Their decisions hinge on your strategic vision for the community. What would you tell them? I think that I would tell them that uh, it is a strong, diverse community. Uh, we have a lot of cultural opportunities. We have a lot of opportunities in, uh, and I think we need to continue to build opportunities to bring young people to Champaign, not just while they're 18 or 19 years old, but to keep them in Champaign, uh, to keep our young professionals in Champaign as well. And uh, basically, yeah, just, you know, it, it's an affordable city. It's close to other places. It's close to, 
other metropolitan areas to visit, but ultimately it's a, it's a good place to live. It's a, it's a big enough but small enough place where you can really find your roots in this community, I think. Next, I'd like to hear from Mr. Kyles, and if you need the question repeated at any point, candidates, please let me know. No, thank you. I give them my story. When I um, first uh, came to the community, I actually was a college student. I thought I was moving back to Chicago, but I had a job here, my station was here, and to be quite honest with you, I had some opportunities. I would talk about those opportunities. I would talk about how I started as, at Sam's Club, and now who knew that I would be deputy mayor? I mean, I would talk about the opportunities to be involved and engaged, and how I've raised my kids in this community. And so I would share my experience and then be able to ask them questions about their experience and what they're looking for, and that's how I would approach that. Thank you. Mr. Gladney? Well, if they're a senior here, they probably already, already be preaching to the choir with telling them some stuff, but there's, uh, I feel like there's so much to do here. We have a diversity of culture, of people, of, of a variety of things. We have the Craner Performing Arts Center. Um, we have the university. We have a whole plethora of employers in various fields uh, that they can go into so people graduate from here with degrees in various uh, fields. I think there are opportunities here in Champaign-Urbana for uh, jobs in all of those fields, or most all of them. Um, we, you can experience all four seasons here, um, <laughs> uh, some more than others. and. <laughs> we, are, we are also located very well. You can go uh, you can take a do, do a day trip to St. Louis, Chicago, Indianapolis. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's, it's the heart of it all, as we like to say. Thank you. Ms. Shannon? Um, so I, I love our micro-urban community. We do have a lot of the amenities of a big city and um, in some ways the feel of a small town. I think one of the things that I would emphasize most to a senior in high school is that this place is small enough that you can have an impact on the city. Um, you could even end up uh, being a city council member or a school board member. Um, but we have desperate need of our young people and their ideas. Um, we're not immune from any of the problems, um, sustainability issues that are happening across the country. We are not immune from the housing crisis here. We need young people here to shape the future of Champaign, to make this a city that people can continue to live in affordably. Uh, we don't have nearly as much affordable and starter home stock as we used to, and we need our young people to be here in order to help with that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Shannon, we're going to start with you for this next question. What is your position on hiring and budgeting for more staff for the police department who are trained in mental health or social services delivery as opposed to policing? I'm actually, I'm very excited about the fact that um, city staff are already working on this. We, um, we've seen that initiative started in Urbana um, and we've heard about that at community coalition meetings. I'm very excited to see Champaign already working on this because there's a lot of calls um, that have uh, mental health as an issue and that having people who are specifically trained to deal with that rather than coming at something with a policing first narrative um, is absolutely going to result in better outcomes. As we heard in the mayoral forum, we do actually have a considerable amount of mental health training currently being given to our current police officers. That is also important, but I would like to see, um, I would like to see more of that, and I would like to see social workers being able to go out on a first response team. Thank you, Mr. Gladney. Yes, I'm in favor of this. Um, not only you know additional training on this for our officers, but also working on. Um, bringing on like mental health providers, social workers uh, to first response, but kind of help hold them back until the scene has been um, you know, made safe. And then uh, they can work with the folks who may be uh, involved with uh, whatever the call was about and uh, make sure that they're all right, mentally as well as physically. Uh, and then have a follow-up for that. So a lot of times, you know, uh, the police will come out on a call, uh, they'll deal with it at the time, uh, but then no one really kind of goes back and checks on them. If we have like uh, social workers whose responsibility is to do that, then hopefully it will help their situation in general, and you won't have repeat calls where the police 
have to go back in the situation that they're dealing with in their lives won't escalate into something worse. Thank you. Mr. Kyles? You know, that's, 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 th our community is different. So I, I, you're going to hear the same thing as far as my commitment and my support, but that's what makes our community different. That must makes our community special, that we are looking for uh, solutions that not only help our police officers, but these solutions help our citizens. So I'm all for it. I'm for monitoring. I'm for looking for it to make to tracking, not just having a, uh, something in place, but tracking to see how it, it's effective and adjusting budget and moving forward from there. Thank you, Mr. Stock. Yeah, I think that that's critical to uh, to good policing in this community. And I think police officers would, for the most part, agree that it's critical uh, to good policing. I think that um, we've just got to look outside the box and look at other communities and how they have implemented this and what they've done with success. I remember talking a couple of years ago um, to a long-retired civilian employee of the police department who talked about the fact that in the early 80s, late 70s, somewhere in there, they actually did have social workers that were tied to uh, tied to the police department and did follow up things. And when there were budget cuts, that went away, never to return. So I think we need to go back and look at what, what were we doing 30 years ago and how did that work and how can we adapt that to today's needs as well. Um, I know U of I, for example, has therapy dogs. Is that something we could also implement as well? Just that sometimes it's little things and little tweaks and little pieces that come together to really create a program that we can be proud of and, and we really should have. Thank you all very much. Mr. Kyles, you're going to start this next question. How effective do you believe the community gun violence reduction blueprint has been so far and why? Uh, I believe that it has been essential because it's not just to have the plan and not to have the, the programs. I've been uh, had a blessed opportunity to actually go to some of these things like the Midnight Basketball, the Dream, first followers. I was just driving in the car and put up pulled beside me a guy who had been a part of the first followers building project and seeing them in the, we're finishing our first house. What, when the pandemic happened and we saw we had to go on Zoom and things like that, well, well, you know, people aren't meeting on Zoom. They have meeting in person. And so when we started having groups that met in person and we started doing our organization back to in-person things, I actually, we actually, the numbers show actually that that crime went down, gun violence went down. Looking Thank forward in my little bit of time left to continue in that program. <laughs> Thank you, and sorry to interrupt you. Ms. Shannon? Um, so one of the things I really like about Champaign is our commitment to data-driven interventions. And I love the fact that for our gun violence uh, blueprint, we have contracted with the University of Illinois to, to do an evaluation of how it is working. So this isn't just something that the four of us sit up here and pontificate about, well, I think it's working, well, I don't think it's working. We have someone whose job it is, whose education um, points them to being able to use objective data to tell whether it is working. I'm thrilled that we passed this. I'm thrilled that we are able to fund some organizations that I believe to be incredibly effective in this community, but I am looking forward to hearing um, how an outside agency feels it is working. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stock? Could, Elizabeth, could you repeat that one more time, please? Absolutely. How effective do you believe the community gun violence reduction blueprint has been so far and why? Well, the numbers certainly show that, that there's been some success. As Mayor Finan mentioned in the last uh, panel about gun violence being down 50%, which is wonderful. Um, I, obviously, without a doubt, the gun violence uh, blueprint has something to do with that. There's always a lot of different factors. When, when I was an administrator years ago, and we would talk about fights and what causes fights or did we prevent fights, you never really know exactly what fixed the issue. Um, so you do as much as you possibly can to and, and hope that certain things stick with certain people or certain situations. So um, my hope is that the gun violence uh, blueprint is definitely helping. I think there's a lot of other things that are probably helping as well, and I think that we continue to just keep being experimental and try things and try things and try things to, uh, to have some success in that area. Thank you. Mr. Gladney? It's the, the violence blueprint is very new, so it's still early days yet, but I do think it is helping. Um, you know, we've already pointed to uh, a reduction in gun violence, which I would love to say that's all due to the blueprint, but I, I, I can't honestly say that. But uh, we are working with uh, community organizations uh, to address 
uh, a whole host of different issues, I think, that are at the root of gun violence. And they've already been doing work uh, in this area. And I think the, the partnership that we've got going with them, the money and the funds that we're using to, to work against gun violence, I think, is, is only uh, bolstering their efforts. So I think it is working, but it's early days yet. And I do like the fact that we are going to get some, some data, actual concrete evidence uh, to learn. Uh, is it working? How well is it working? What needs to be improved? What do we need to do differently? Uh, that sort of thing. Thank you. Mr. Kyles, you are going to kick off this next question. And if you all need me to repeat this four times, I am happy to do it. It's a mouthful. <laughs> the Champaign City Council's goals and key projects list five goals, community safety, economic opportunity, safe, sustainable infrastructure, vibrant, diverse neighborhoods, and ongoing projects. Select one of these areas and share with us how you plan to achieve this goal. Well, I'm going to select community safety for $500, please. <laughs> and here's why. Because I can wrap a lot of those goals in community safety. You know, we talk about police and helping police officers more. But how about when a police officer can go to Garden Hills and see lights and see cameras? We talk about bettering police officers more. But you know what? When you had a lift program going and you had a blueprint going, you have all that going. That's what community safety looks like for me. You talk about economic development. Well, when a person has a job, well, guess what? They ain't going to be in. Oh, did I say they ain't going to be? I did. <laughs> well, they're not going to be involved in all of those things. So I'm going to put community safety, but I'm going to wrap some things in community safety, and that's what I would choose. Thank you. Mr. Gladney. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I would also go with community safety. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like a broken record up here, but you know we've talked a lot about the initiatives that we've got going, and I think that's that's those are all good. I think we've got a lot coming together, and you know, sort of like uh, Councilmember Kyle's mentioned, uh, you know, economic development is also a, a factor in that as well, as well as infrastructure. You know, um, one thing we've heard a lot from our folks in Garden Hills is how, you know, showing that the city cares about them by investing in that area and putting in street lights and, and sidewalks and, and fixing the, the, the drainage issues. Um, you know, it, 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 it's impactful to people when they know that their city cares about them. And it gives them a sense of pride in, in the neighborhood that they live in, that like, hey, wow, look at this. And so I think a lot of that goes into um, making a community feel safe, um, along with all the other things that we're doing, sort of like, like license plate readers and, and bolstering the police department and, and all of that. Thank you. Kathy Shannon? So again, I want to echo what everybody else is saying. All of these goals work together. None of these things happen in isolation. Um, I just, because I tend to talk about this more, I'm going to pick up on infrastructure and say um, I'm very excited about the street lights, sidewalks, and drainage that are going in at Garden Hills. There's a lot more to be done throughout the city. And we know that um, you know our storms are getting more severe. Rains are getting, when rain happens, we get a lot more rain at a time. And so this is something that we are going to have to look forward to and figure out, you know, we're talking about 50 year storms are now happening every five years. And so we're gonna have to think about that. But the way we put, the way we build our infrastructure has enormous impact on community safety, on economic development, on vibrant neighborhoods. We can't consider any of these goals in isolation, and we need to work on them all together. Thank you. Thank you. Greg Stock? I want to note that it's really hard to be the fourth person, because everybody <laughs> said, and Will even stole my joke, because I was actually going to do that same way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, they, I, but I would concur, though. They do certainly all go together. Um, I'll talk about community safety uh, only from just a slightly different angle. Uh, when we think community safety, we often think about police, as, as, as is natural. Fire is also in there as well. And I think when we, we need to look at both police and fire staffing and make sure, because these aren't jobs that you can hire somebody and, OK, start next Tuesday because it's a six-month, year-long process. Ooh, that's quick. Uh, and um, so I think we've got to look at some forward thinking in terms of hiring because what's happening with police and fire both is they have to work a lot of overtime. Well, when I'm on my 12th hour of my day, I'm probably not going to be as sharp as I was on my second hour of my day. And I think that we've got to think about making sure that these agencies are staffed well so that they are the, so that 
the people at work are at their best at all times. Um, I think, yeah, so. Uh, Greg you. Stock, the moderator heard you that you don't like to go last, so you get to go first on this <laughs> next question. <laughs> I didn't how, say first either. <laughs> <laughs> Not last. I'm trying to mix it up. <laughs> All right. How do you view traffic stops as a means of uncovering guns and drugs in Champaign? Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, I think that, you know, it, it's always a fine line because you get into the conversations about, you know, where are those taking place? Are they only taking place in certain parts of town? Are they only taking place with certain groups of people? Um, so I think that they, I think that they play a part. I don't think that there's any, any question of that. That is, if you read the, you know, police reports in the News Gazette, you do see that there are a lot of people that are, uh, a lot of guns being taken off the streets are taking place. I'm, as I said, I'm on the Crime Stoppers board, so every month I, you know, we kind of go through some of the, some of the, uh, situations that have happened, and that is a factor. Um, I think it's it's all about moderation, though, in terms of not infringing on people's civil liberties and uh, civil rights in the process. Thank you. Kathy Shannon? So I, this is a difficult question. Um, I, I really do think that an enormous amount of data shows that traffic stops tend to be um, tend to have racial disparities. And we need to keep that in the forefront of our minds when we talk about traffic stops. Um, I believe that the people in this community who are most affected by gun violence would tell you that they have enough concern about that gun violence that they want to see at least some um, traffic stops looking for guns. And, and, and as Mr. Stock said, guns do get found during those traffic stops. But if we are not continually asking ourselves um, where are these happening, if we're not looking at the statistics and continually um, just questioning ourselves and making sure that we are doing this right, then, then we are doing our people a disservice. Thank you. Will Kyles? So as an African American, you would obviously know that this is an interesting question for me. But what we have to realize is that as African Americans, we're not asking police to not do their job. We are asking that police officers to do their job. We're just saying, let's just make sure that job is done equitably, meaning that if black folks are stopped, then stop some white folks too. I ain't trying, I mean, I'm in a room full of white folks, so don't look at me all wild though, <laughs> white people. But that is what we're looking for. We're just looking for equality. We're not asking for anybody to, to step away or look aside. We're just asking, if you look at the reports, if you look at the complaints, most of it's board, I didn't like the way the officer talked to me. That's most of it. So if we're solving issues and people feel like, you know what, I was in the wrong, I've had plenty of people, believe it or not, say they were in the wrong, then I think that we can move forward as a community. Thank you. Matthew Gladney. Can you please repeat the question? Sure. How do you view traffic stops as a means of uncovering guns and drugs in Champaign? Okay, thanks. I mean, it's certainly uh, one tool uh, for that. Uh, but I think it's already been mentioned here earlier. My concern is that it's done uh, equitably. So as long as we are not targeting particular demographics for it, um, I think it, it's okay. But you know, we, we all have a lot of inherent bias in us uh, that we may not even be aware of. Um, so I think you have to remain conscious of, of you know, the number of stops we're doing, where, who we're pulling over, um, the reasons, the justification that we're using. Um, because you can start to create a narrative that could become a false narrative by saying, well, look, this, this certain section of town or this group of people um, are more prone to have guns or, or drugs on their person. When you may not be pulling over everybody equally and maybe only kind of painting a sort of a one-sided picture of things. Uh, as long as it's done equitably, also I'm okay with it. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we need to give our two-minute summations right now. That time went really quickly, and I know there is going to be an opportunity to meet with the candidates in Room C. I do promise that afterwards if you have more questions. But first, we would like to hear for two minutes from, in this order, Matthew Gladney, Kathy Shannon, Greg Stock, and Will Kyles. Let's start with you, Matt Gladney. Thank you. Um, so again, thank you all for, for coming out today, and thank you for the sponsors for, for hosting this. So in my opening remarks, I kind of talked about me, 
and my life and, and sort of the past, like what has council done so far. I'd like to look ahead. Um, a lot of it is what you've heard about so far. I, we have a lot of kind of balls in the air, so to speak. We have the gun violence uh, reduction blueprint. We have the lift program. Uh, we have the Garden Hills Improvement Project, um, just to name a few things. Uh, some of those are funded quite a bit through ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act uh, funding. And I would like to see uh, and be a part of uh, continuing to find funding for those when the ARPA funds run out. In other words, I think these are important projects. Um, I want to uh, see that they are maintained. I want to be able to tweak them if we find out, hey, this is working, this is not working, how can we make them better? So there's a lot of important things coming up that um, I would like to sort of have a voice in on that. Um, and there's also things such as uh, making sure that our first responders feel uh, safe uh, while providing public safety. And that goes to police uh, hiring. It also goes to the fire department staffing. And also, we have a fire station in particular that's, that's getting old and may need to be either updated or replaced. So I want to be kind of a part of the conversation on making sure that we take care of them in that regard. Um, our downtown is a vital part of our community, and I want to make sure that we find a way to make it a, a safer downtown and make it even more vibrant downtown than it already is. Um, so there's a lot to look forward to, things I haven't even like thought of. You know, four years ago, I had no idea that we were going to go through the kind of time period that we, we did. So yeah, I'm, uh, I think the future of Champagne is ultimately bright and I uh, would love to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew Gladney. Kathy Shannon. Yeah, so I wanna thank again the sponsors, moderators, timekeepers, audience, and everyone who submitted questions. I appreciate uh, the chance that you've given us all to discuss uh, candidacies, positions, and our experience. Um, I really, I really care about putting this community on a sustainable path, both environmentally and financially. Um, and you know, a big part of that is looking at um, how we need to fix a lot of our current infrastructure within the city before we build out so much. Um, and this is something I don't think that many people are talking about right now. Um, I think that this is going to become a bigger and bigger issue moving forward. Um, and we are probably facing um, very different fiscal environment in the next several years as the ARPA money runs out. Um, I think it's important that we look at the sustainability of our tax base. Um, I had um, a very strong view of this as a Unit 4 board member, and um, the city is going to be facing these same issues. So. I think it's important that we do economic development to strengthen that tax base. I think it's important that we develop our city in such a way that we attract um, young people here, that we have affordable, sustainable housing, that we have walkable and bikeable neighborhoods, and that we have um, infrastructure that is supported by a strong property tax base, a strong economic base. Um, so um, I would appreciate your vote, um, but I'd also appreciate more conversation on these ideas because whether or not I win, we're going, we've got a lot of things that we need to talk about going forward and I am looking forward to discussing those further. Thank you, Kathy Shannon. Greg Stock. Okay. Uh, again, thanks for everybody for coming out. Elizabeth, I didn't give you a shout out earlier, so thank you for <laughs> being up here. Um, yeah, I think, you know, as I think back of the five years or six years I was on city council, there's some things that I'm definitely proud of and would like to continue to build on. Um, the gambling moratorium, the gambling cafe moratorium was, was me, I think, in terms of passing the study session. Um, I kind of caught the tail end of the West Washington drainage. I kind of caught the front end of the Garden Hills drainage project, so I would like to be a part of that. I think Council Member Bricks and I were the first people to approach the city manager about starting property acquisition. Um, you know, certainly as, I've, as we've said, working with, with public safety and maintaining staffing levels and, and just doing better and being responsive to our citizens in general. Uh, I think that's one of the things that when I was on council earlier, um, I answered pretty darn near every email and there were a lot of them. I might have missed one or two here and there, but, but by and large, so I think it's about being responsive. It's about being visible to the community, um, you know, being on council in the post-COVID era, era um, 
is appealing because there's actually events to go to. You know, one of the things that uh, that we often do, and, and uh, some more than others, is to attend neighborhood events or meetings and those kinds of things and interact with and do a lot of public engagement. When COVID came, we didn't really have those opportunities as much anymore. So um, so that's, that's an appealing thing because I think it's important to get out in the neighborhoods. I think it's important to get to know citizens from all over uh, Champaign. Um, so that's that's a that's a big piece of of what I do. I think my vast ex my different experiences, both as a teacher and the people I've taught and people I've worked with, but also uh, the real estate segment of the world and kind of under having a better understanding of zoning and a better understanding of of issues in certain neighborhoods. I think as I was leaving council, if I remember correctly, Mayor Fine and uh, probably correctly identified that I knew where just about every pothole in Champaign was, and I guarantee you, I knew where every street light was out. So anyway, so the public works piece as well, so. Okay. <laughs> Thanks Thank again. You. Thank you very much, Greg Stock. And Will Kyles, you have the final word. Again, my name is William Kyles, and I'm seeking re-election for the at-large city council member position. I consider elections as a story that I once read in the good book. A man gave gold coins to three individuals with the hope that they would manage his coins well. Well, as the story goes, two of those individuals doubled their earnings, one not so well. One of the morals of the story was that those given responsibility have to be accountable to what is given. Well, if the voters came to me and asked what I've done with the responsibilities that you've entrusted me over these past 14 years, I would say I prayed and I worked. I worked and I prayed. I prayed and I worked and I worked and I prayed. I worked faithfully and prayed with the community, the council, and the staff. And now that I work together, we now have a low barrier shelter homeless facility. Now that I work together, we have a new building down the street for equity and engagement. Now that I work together, we have a grant writer that can work on problems such as food insecurities. Now that I work together, we now have a blueprint plan and lift that works on building families. We've got a balanced budget. And guess what? Garden Hills is getting an upgrade. We've worked together to address the needs of our officers and communities. I didn't say it. The numbers show it. Gun violence is going down. We worked on more initiatives together than I have time to say. And yes, God is blessing us. He's favoring us to make it through this pandemic. And yet we still have work to do. The work is not finished. I hope you can tell I'm still passionate about showing up to the job and going to work. I'm fired up for the position. My hope is that the voters would say on April 4th, William Kyles, you've been a good and faithful servant. We're going to give you four more years. Thank you for the panel. Thank you for the community for listening. I look forward to being your faithful servant for four more years. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to mirror all of our candidates and their thanks to the audience, of course, to our sponsors, the timekeepers. Thank you so much for keeping this going. And most importantly, the candidates for being here today, the 2023 Municipal Election Candidate Forum. The informal meet and greet is going to happen in room C. I keep pointing this way. It's this way, right? I, yeah, no, it's that way. Thank you. It's out there. Uh, please join us soon for the Unit 4 School Board Forum. That's going to happen at 325. There are seven of them, so come ready to listen and absorb. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you especially to the candidates. I want to note in typical Greg Stock fashion, Matt has his...